so I'm Maria. I'm a PhD candidate in humanities, second year, in the University of Bombay in, in Barcelona. And I would also like to thank uh, Luis Hernando Gomez, who was my tutor in, in Medellin when I was uh, conducting my field work then, uh, this summer, from July to September. So I will be presenting some of the results of this uh, initial first part of the, the field work. And you can see the title of it. So, um, the structure of the presentation, just briefly, I'll get into context, why Medellin, also some theoretical lines, but just uh, very few of them. Then I'll introduce the methodology I used and some results, and then I'll try to go just a couple of conclusions, even though I think it's, it's too early to do it at this phase. And I will be very uh, happy to receive all, all of your comments and critique, because it's still very precious. Right, so uh, the context. Um, I wanted to, I want to study the, uh, the social impact of, of music making uh, on our everyday territories, especially the territories of, of youth. And um, I choose to, to conduct a field work in Medellin. Why? So I think for people at least that work in, in urban, urbanism and urban studies, Medellin is a city that is fairly, uh, fairly famous. Uh, it's, um, well, it's famous for its uh, kind of magic transformation from uh, being uh, one of the world's most violent cities back in the 1990s because of the drug trafficking, because of the very high homicide rate um, that in the 90s, and becoming the one of the most innovative cities uh, back in 2014, I think. So this transformation um, has had to do a lot with these type of um, top, top to bottom. Um, um, policies were through which new infrastructures have been made, and the metro cable, the metro, um, many uh, libraries in the poor areas of the city, open air gyms, and so on. So I, I think uh, the city of Medellin, Colombia, has uh, has been fairly successful in, in kind of drawing a, a, a pretty picture or image uh, of the new facade of the city. However, I'm asking whether this is actually true. So how is this? conflict-free space actually created in the neighborhoods, in the, in the barrios, in the, in the, um, through grassroots movements. So uh, in order to, to study that, I went there and I visited uh, different uh, entities that offer a few musical activities and lessons to, to children um, during the, a period of, of three months approximately. Um, so just uh, very briefly, uh, theoretically speaking, uh, I'm not exactly a geographer, I'm not exactly a musicologist either, I'm a musician, and I like humanities. Um, but I, I think I come from the Slytherin school, of seeing space as something uh, that is socially, socially produced, and I appreciate Doreen Madison's way of seeing uh, space as a multitude of stories upon which we, we, we walk and we must have in mind. And then, uh, well, all this you all uh, know well, uh, for me the, the the uh, term of musicking, um, coined by Christopher Small, has been really useful to understand also what happens uh, during the moments when I am on stage and I communicate with the drum player or with the guitar player perhaps and with the public. That's actually where the main meaning of music is actually kind of born. Um, and then the, uh, the lower quotes here would refer to music's um, impact or capacity of, of a kind of constructing individual and group, by, group identities and also this would lead to the to making of, of communities and at least from the you know, the um, Afro, uh, anthropological approach uh, human communities as well as other animal communities tend to define themselves through a territory so this is interesting because um, a community tends to become fixed to a, a determined place and um, as Johnston says, that uh, these communities that have their own fixed place have a greater capacity or, or bigger strength to push against the, um, the dominant power paradigms uh, because in these communities um, alternative activities can be practiced and also agency can be empowered. So this is interesting because uh, even though uh, Medellin is supposedly, uh, sorry, supposedly changed and uh, transformed, uh, the, the crime rates have gone down about 80% in the, in, the, in the last 20 years, 30 years, sorry. Uh, but still, uh, the criminal acts that uh, are committed in the city are most often 
related to the um, um, territorial dynamics. So it's about uh, different you know, combos of criminal <coughs> gangs trying to uh, get control over the territory. So there are still relatively few areas in the city where the state is actually present. In other cases, it's either the paramilitary groups or the combos or other uh, criminal criminal groups. And um, the situation is obviously worse in the in the in the poor areas of the city where the rates of recruitment of youth into criminal gangs is, is much higher because there's a lack of alternative activities, uh, after school activities, which means that children spend a lot of time on the streets and um, sooner or later, especially boys, become parts of, um, of criminal groups because that's uh, a way of getting power in the neighborhood at least, also uh, being recognized by other fellows. Um, and it's definitely a, a problem. So, as for the methodology, um, I've been using a method, an ethnographic approach using um, policy research methods, structured and semi-structured interviews, uh, works of, um, workshops of social mapping. Um, it, it was normally about, uh, the group sizes were around five to 10 people, um, of an age from 14 to, to 18 years in general, I would say. A lot of participant observation or hanging out, as we were saying with, with Sam yesterday. Uh, a lot of diaries, and also um, I gave some um, kind of workshops of geography and music to some children, and also I participated in the in the rap rehearsals, and we also recorded a, a rap song actually. Um, and then I I ended up conducting um, what we could say like a parallel study. So on the one hand, I was visiting. Uh, the schools that form part of the network of music schools of Medellin, the Red, Red de las Escuelas de Música. Um, and on the other hand, I also tracked down some of the so-called non-institutional entities that would also offer uh, free music lessons or activities to, to young people. And the criteria I had in both cases was that uh, these um, spaces of musicking would be located in the, um, in the low or lower middle class areas, which according to the, uh, to the Colombian system of stratification, it go from one to three. It's a rather polemical way of, of um, kind of dividing the city. And yeah, um, so in the, um, in the interviews that I conducted with nine of the principals of the, of the music schools, I try to sort of uh, get an idea of the territorial and the social dimension or, or context of the area. So, for example, I would ask them if there's any um, any type of obstacles that may complicate the pupils' arrival to the music school, um, referring to the so-called um, <coughs> invisible uh, frontiers or borders, and also if, if these obstacles uh, make it more difficult for the uh, for the children to remain in the school. And also, I asked if um, or what would be the biggest social impact of, of practicing music for the, for the students. And then um, in, the, in the workshops that I conducted with, uh, with the participants of the music lessons, I would ask them to, uh, to draw several layers of maps. Uh, the first one was about just generally about their uh, everyday territory. Um, then I asked them to draw places or, or uh, paths that they would find where comfortable when they where they felt secure or uh, also another layer where they would have to uh, draw down the, the spaces they would rather um, uh, not go to so just um, briefly now um, sorry. Um, the network of music schools of Medellin La Red is a, is a project that was started back in 1996 uh, so we go back to the 90s, which uh, was still this uh, violent city, and um, uh, the idea back then was to, to as the slogan says, give children uh, musical instruments instead of guns. Uh, as they say, no child that learns to play a, a musical instrument will ever want to use a gun. So the first schools were opened up in, in, in uh, Aranjuez, Madrique, Villa Hermosa, which are both, uh, with, which are all um, strata one to two, which is to say the lowest, uh, the poorest areas of the city, and ha that had the highest crime rates and problems of, of youth being recruited in in these uh, criminal gangs. Um, 
And uh, well, nowadays there's actually 27 schools all around the city, not only in the, uh, in the core areas, but in, in all, all social classes, let's say. And um, as we discussed with, with um, Mr. Baker yesterday, uh, the um, um, original approach has, has changed quite a lot uh, from, from its initial days. Um, so getting to the kind of first results, um, as I said, I visited uh, nine schools of the, of the network of music schools. I conducted nine interviews with the principals and the, in the end there were three workshops conducted with, with the participants of the lessons. And uh, I would like to talk about this um, uh, music school called Boston, which is uh, located in the district of Candelaria, which will be the center of Medellin. Um, so it's Strata 3, 4 actually. Um, the, the problem over there is, is that it's exactly in the meeting place of the interest of several uh, criminal groups. So there's a constant kind of negotiation of power over the, the, the space, of the streets, of the parks and so on. And this basically makes it very difficult for the children to uh, arrive to, to school um, or to keep on going there because there's a lot of cases of, of their instruments being mugged uh, or, or being stolen or them being mugged or, or you know, they're taken to the uh, ATM so they have to enter their uh, credit cards and so on. So um, it's kind of a, um, it was definitely in this school where I started to understand the, um, how to say, the characteristic or the capacity of music of resisting to the tone, to this paradigm, this uh, power paradigm. And also, sorry, uh, also music as a as a way of reclaiming territory. So um, here is a little poster of, the, of an event they were organizing. So it was a long, all day long concert that was uh, that was organized right in, in the park in front of the, the schoolhouse. And so they were trying to kind of pin take control of the park because it was this place where they would want to um, use as well for the rehearsals and so on, but it was impossible because the, the instruments would be stolen and the, it, was, it was dangerous. Uh, so on the one hand they did this all day long concert and also uh, they were organizing the kind of a, um, mm, let's say, weekly rehearsals. The schoolhouse itself was becoming too small for the amount of children that were attending it, so they needed an extra space. So they proposed doing the rehearsals uh, in the park, but they needed uh, parents to be present and also some police agents to help them out because uh, otherwise the instruments would be stolen once again. So um, yeah, th for me this was a, a space where this uh, idea of music as resistance became rather imperative. And, and well, really see, but um, uh, this comes from the uh, interview with the principal of the school, a very strong lady, I would say, who told me about all these um, kind of <coughs> problems of, of security they were having, but she was extremely positive saying that now. It's actually very cool that these inconvenient and, and seemingly difficult things are happening because through these experiences we learn, so it's a way of, of making um, community as well, I would say, and, and, and common lessons. Um, and then I will move on to um, to the example of uh, of this kind of non-institutional projects. Uh, this one is called Agroarte, and it mainly takes place in the Comuna Trete, in San Javier district, right here. So um, to contextualize a little bit, uh, Comuna Trete is definitely well. I would say it's one of the districts that has suffered most because of the the civil conflict of, uh, of Medellin above all because um, uh, it gives access to uh, two main um, mm. highways that would take you to the Guarara district or to the port of Antioquia which are both very important um, uh, trading centers uh, and also it's uh, well, for decades now it's been the, the area through which uh, drugs and, and, and weapons have been coming in and out of, of Medellin so there's a, also a constant kind of a um, um, negotiation of who has power of this of this district. Uh, at the moment, it's it's mainly controlled by the paramilitary uh, group. Um, so, Agroarte um, is a project that uh, was funded by this young man called Aka, who's uh, 
nickname obviously comes from the AK-47. Mm -hmm. uh, he also, uh, in his youth, he used to form part of a, a criminal group as well, but he, he got out of it and started to, to do um, tasks of uh, gardening, horticulture, basically, in a rather polemic space as well, in the higher parts of, of, of San Javier. And uh, nowadays, what, uh, uh, let's say, what he suggests uh, throughout the project of Alroarte, that combines uh, horticulture and arts, mostly music, is that um, uh, let's see, uh, whoever wants to take part of these rap lessons, so they do mostly hip hop music, uh, rap, rap rehearsals and so on, whoever wants to form part of that uh, must also put his or her fingers in the, in the ground, in the soil, because uh, as he says, um, you know, in, uh, hip hop is generally the, the street, um, but under the street is the soil, and in the soil we find our stories, uh, our memories and battles. So that is why whoever wants to learn how to rap must learn to sow, as it is in the ground where, we, where real stories are found, and it's a way of, of um, uh, creating bonds. So going back here, down here, you can see a, an image of uh, Mama Rapera in the, in the middle, she's the, the rapping mom, the rapping mommy. Who, uh, who gives the rap rehearsals at this uh, uh, Casa, Casa Morado, which is the, if you say, like this cultural house where the rehearsals take place. So, uh, yeah, rehearsals are, are done on Saturdays in the afternoon, and if you want to form part of it, you must go there at 9 o'clock in the morning, do some watering, or hang around in the, hang out in the end, and then you can also um, do your, your rapping thing. Um, so, uh, with this agroarte, what was uh, very interesting for me is, is uh, once again, the kind of um, territorial awareness or consciousness, right? So, um, the participants of the, of the project are mostly from the same district. They get together in, in Casa Mora, they do their sewing, their, their rapping rehearsals. Um, as you can see in the images on the right, they've been uh, taking control of the territory, expanding their kind of presence. Uh, over time, uh, so we put in um, new plants, uh, there's also a vertical garden right in front of the cemetery of, of San Javier. So it's, um, on the one hand, it's, it's through this um, uh, task of, uh, of gardening and also through music that they're expanding their territory. So they constantly make little musical interventions in, um, in the same cultural house. This one here is uh, from a, a concert they held in the cemetery of San Javier to, to commemorate uh, the death of a, of a young boy as well. Uh, and they're very active in, in, uh, in organizing concerts in general. And it's uh, uh, always without uh, a permission or a license. Whilst um, if we talk about the events that will be organized uh, for the musicians of the music schools, they would always be with a kind of a uh, official uh, license. So, if you don't mind, I'll put just a, a little part of the um, of a um, of a recording that we did at one point uh, with this uh, voice. So this is called the uh, the religion. So it's all the music that they're making there. Obviously, has a very kind of a heavy political and content as well. So this one is obviously against the church and everything. I'll just put a... So this girl is actually Danish. I sang a little bit as well. This is a local guy. consciousness or awareness of, uh, of the impact that they were having uh, with these uh, music, uh, musical practice. Um, and also, well, I was actually rethinking of my, rethinking my 
conclusions, my general ideas, because I've been struggling uh, with with deciding whether I should go back there and which project should I get more engaged with. And I would say that um, through the interviews and workshops that I conducted, um, there were several things that were in common, outcomes that were very common. So, for example, um, you can tell that the, the general lack of feeling of home and parental care and after school activities is, is rather common all over the city still, and especially in the poorer areas. Uh, what was said about, uh, what was heard in all of the interviews, uh, what was told about, told by all the principals of the schools or the, the representatives of the other non-institutional projects, is that this space of musicking or the place of musicking is a second or even a first home for the kids that don't get a lot of parental care in, in home. Um, and then also you can tell how the, the place of musicking is, is where the social and territorial relationships are created. Um, also how, how youth um, may get recognition and protect, protection or, or personal attainment. There were cases of, of um, well, one of the principals told me that if you wear, if you wear the t-shirt of the, of the network of music schools, then you are kind of protected in the area and you won't have troubles for uh, crossing the, uh, the invisible frontiers, so it's it's like literal protection as well. Uh, and then, oh yeah, the territory awareness is born out of community activities. Now, however, uh, just thinking about um, a little bit about the issue of stages that we were talking about now, um, I think uh, that in general we can tell that uh, the network of music schools kind of um, follows the line of the. Um, top to bottom idea of, of transforming or, or changing the city. So um, we can even say that it, it, it perhaps um, uh, helps to. Uh, um, how did I say it? Um, kind of follow the conventional uh, social structures, perhaps through the musical, uh, through the classical music lessons that are given, whilst um, the non-institutional. Uh, um, entities have a, a bit of more liberty or freedom to do their uh, interventions and to to make their own ideology and to uh, organize themselves. Um, uh, so yeah, I wanted to go back to Christopher Small that um, even though you know music is a is an instrument of of exploration for for everyone, I think we are still um, conformed or uh, you know the. And community where we practice music as well influences ourselves as well a lot. So in the end, if you come from the from the music school where only classical music is taught, then you perhaps only stay in the same structures of, of all times. Whilst um, in communities or grassroots movements where uh, kind of personal um, activity is is more important, or your own. Uh, I'm lost now, sorry. Um, Let's say, pardon? agency. Agency, exactly, uh, is more important. Then it's also uh, more uh, possible for alternative um, paradigms to be to be born. And I will leave it here. Sorry. <laughs>